How does my background look like even? Because I really can't see it from my end. Yeah, dude. Yeah, you're good, man. We're live. So, um, <laughs> what's going on, man? What's going on? Look at this. It's so easy right now. Share, Super excited, like, man. Share, comment, like. Yeah, me too. So. Welcome, everybody. We are live. I'm um, Dave DeVoe. Uh, we're here with Brett, Cora, and Steven Dunkert, who uh, just announced that he moved over and joined us at EXP. Welcome, yeah. brother. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Everyone's been so welcoming, and I'm very excited. Yeah. Awesome. We are, too. Yeah. Um, it's going to be fun. Definitely. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things we were talking about over the last year um, was how much fun we're having in, in what we're doing here. And uh, yeah, we definitely want to get into, um, you know, some of the reasons you decided to, to make this change, uh, why you decided to make it now and a little bit about your business. So um, sure. tell us, so in, in 2019, you closed 40 transactions? Correct. Yes. Wow. That's awesome, man. And it's just you. I mean, you don't have a team. You don't have agents. That was you that closed. You, you have a TC, and that was you right. that closed the transaction to yourself. It, it, it was just me. Uh, I did all the showings. I went on all listing appointments. And I had a part-time TC. So, uh, you know, I don't touch any paperwork. She handles all of that. But uh, as far as um, in the field, yeah, it's just me. Wow. And so... In terms of you being able to handle that, I mean, like 40 transactions is a lot uh, for one sure. person to do. Um, how do you manage your time? Are you, you know, do you run off a schedule? Um, do you, you know, do you find yourself just kind of running crazy or do you have it down pretty, you know, pretty efficient at this point? Yeah, no. So when I first got in the business, you know, I was just kind of running with a running everywhere, right? Without no, with any direction. But once I started getting more structure and a foundation in place, I realized that the schedule was key to to getting things done officially, right? So I do follow a schedule. I time block my lead generation. I time block when I'm following up, and I time block when I'm supposed to go on appointments. Is it perfect every time? No, but you know, I, I try to follow that as much as I can. So yeah, I definitely do follow a schedule. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna ask too. I mean, when you know, with those transactions, where do you where do, where does the like where are you a pro at? Where do you source most of your business from? Are you a big database guy? Fizbo's expired. Yeah, so I do a lot of um, cold calling. So I I do a lot of cold calling. It's a mix between cold calling, expires for sub owners, circle prospecting, and also um, sphere of influence, which was something that I was avoiding for a long time until I realized like, hey, you know, a lot of people that I know need my service. So then I started you know, pushing that more. And prospecting that more so it's kind of 50 50 cold calling and now the sphere is really growing nice that's awesome and i think that everybody experiences that hesitation right especially with our, our database the people that actually like us yeah um, you know brett and i were you know we were more comfortable calling fizbos uh than we were calling our our sphere in the beginning um and, and then finally you realize like your database is gonna be the foundation for your business so you don't have to cold call uh, for the rest of your life. So when you do that, like when you're cold calling, who, who are you calling? Are you doing like just listed just solds? You just call neighborhoods or what? It's it's mostly neighborhoods and, and just listed just sold calls. Um, I do call some expireds for sale by owners here and there, you know, um, but mostly it is circle prospecting around neighborhoods. So I'm reaching out and I'm just seeing if there's anything I can do for them See, and giving them some information about the market and, and letting them know that I'm an active agent in the market and that we've done X for your neighbor. Um, so my, my goal isn't to get business from them immediately. It's to just be that local expert and let them know, hey, I'm an active agent. I'm here for you if you need me. And then I try to uh, stay in touch with them and put them in the database. Awesome. Good. Yeah. So just being of service letting them know you're the local expert and continuing to bring value to them over time. Right. Right. And so what we're going to get into in a little bit is how, how that has helped you grow and how that has changed in the last month you, in, in terms of what you're doing on a daily basis. Um, but first, you know, let's talk about you coming and joining us at EXP. Um, you know, you're yeah. one of the, you're one of my favorite people, dude. And, and uh, you know, I said this before in my post, it, you're, you're just, you're an amazing agent. 
you got a really big vision in terms of what you want to do in terms of investments, um, in terms of growing your business. And you're just one of the best dudes uh, that I know in the <laughs> business. So I'm it's, so happy. Thank you, man. To, uh, yeah, it, man. It's cool when you watch him too. Like he's one of the ones that, you know, as he's talking right now and as you follow him on social media and stuff, it's like he's doing everything right. Like even his announcement video is better than like, like everything yeah. that you're doing is like dialed in and it definitely shows, you know, based on your production in such a short amount of time. Right. No, thank you. I really appreciate that. But I mean, as far as me joining, I mean, I originally got the opportunity presented to me about three years ago in 2017. And when I first saw it, I was like, wow, that is powerful. But in my mind, I said, that's too good to be true. Right. At the time it wasn't as there were, I think at like less than 10,000 agents or like 5,000 agents, something like that. And I said, wow, that's really interesting. And that was kind of it. And then through the years, I've had different people try to, um, you know, present it to me, but they did it in the wrong way. You know, it wasn't the right, it wasn't done the right way. Um, they were coming from just, you know, it, it, so I kind of just put it to the side. Um, and then once you went over last year, I remember I hit, I contacted you. I said, Dave, you know, um, you know, congratulations. Um, that's a great move. And I, I understood why you did that because of, of the value of the company, right? The, the, how the model actually works. Um, yeah. but it, it did take me almost a whole year, um, uh, to make the decision. You know, I had a lot of questions. I had, you know, a lot of concerns and doubts about the company. Um, you know, I didn't think it was sustainable. Um, I didn't like how some people were recruiting. So those are the things that avoided me. But once I really got the answers and I really understood how it works and why it's like so it's so exciting and why everyone from all over the country are joining this company it, it makes sense right it's, it's a no-brainer and um so that's kind of how i went got about it in regards to the company and then um you know i just you, i just really mean, started doing my research before, so. sorry i didn't mean to, to cut you off but yeah, you no, said something before that you know it's too good to be true um I, I yeah. hear that a lot. I've heard that a couple of times today. And and yeah. I totally get it. Like sometimes you you see something a certain way and, and it, it doesn't make sense for you. And Brett and I, you know, we had this this um opportunity pitched to us several times and, and it was finally it was the way that it was brought to us that made it make sense. And like Jay Kinder says, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Like once you get it it's just going to be there and it's just you know kind of a matter of time so but you i mean you were happy where you were you you said this in your video early like you were happy you were doing great you didn't have to move no. um, so what were some of the things that really showed you the value of making the move in terms of growth in terms of your vision and what you want to do right because you you were doing great you know you were growing For sure. You were one of the top uh, profit share earners at Keller Williams. I mean, you were, you were doing yeah. so much and you were happy there. So we'll, share with me some of the things that really stood out to you and made you go, um, yeah, I want to I want to join these guys. Right, right. Well, first of all, you know, my, I, I, KW, I, I really enjoyed it while I was there. I think I still think it's a great company. Everyone there supported me and, and helped me. So uh, I just want to say that. But one of the main reasons why this was why I made this decision. I mean, aside from all the reasons, we can literally be here on each topic and talk about it all day, right? But the, the main reason is really the amount of value that the company brings. And what I mean by that is the, is the people who you align yourself with and the, and the group that we have together, the amount of value you guys are giving is ridiculous, right? I mean, starting from you guys, right? Um, Jay Kinder, Michael Reese, uh, Kyle Whistle, Dan Beer, right? They're literally pouring everything that they know to the group to the to the partnership and the way i look at it, it's like so for example you guys already accomplish where i'm going right mm -hmm. so you guys are going to be saving me a whole bunch of time a whole bunch of money right and potentially i can get there quicker right so me personally i see a lot of value in that and and, and, it's, and also goes with the people who are bigger than you guys right who are doing things at a higher level right so and so that the, the environment and, and and the masterminds and the amount of value from that, I saw a lot of value in that, right? Yeah. So that, that's one of the main reasons why. I mean, everything else is just a plus, but, right. and, and the way I'm looking at it is like anything that I learned from you guys or them, I'm just gonna share it with everyone that partners with, with us and I'm gonna give them everything and I want them to just blow up bigger than me, right? Yeah. Um, Cause it benefits all of us, right? And 
you know, I really saw value in that. I think that's, I think that's super important because in a lot of these companies, you know, people do share and they, and they do, and they do um, help you. And mm -hmm. I, you know, people help me, um, but they don't really give you the step-by-step, -step, you know, X, Y, and Z to get to, you know, to get here, you right. know, and um, over here, that's exactly what you're getting. Or, or they, they again, I, you know, they, they may not actually know, or they may not have experienced it. What, what was really cool, Dave and I were on a call with Michael Reese, who's in our upline um, last week, and he was talking about how he charged ten thousand dollars for an ISA event, and we're like, wow, that's expensive for a two day event. And we're like, well, where'd you get your information? And he's like, because I already did what they needed to know how to do. I ran a team. I think he had 38 ISAs. He had all of the numbers broken down like that. This guy's not reading from a book. This guy's writing the book about it. And, that's and, and that's like what Dave and I, when we were looking you know, at who we should join with EXP and how we should come over, that was so important in you know the seven people we chose above us because it is like you were saying, it's like, go, go sell 500 homes a year. We have somebody that sells a thousand that you can talk to about how to get to a thousand. Like we, we, the wealth of knowledge that's, that's available and to like really lean on is, is, is just, you know, for me, it's, it, it's like infinite. And once you get to that, whatever that crazy, you know, absolute highest level in real estate is, well then, Jay Kinder will probably point you in a different direction and say, go talk to this guy and learn about this now or go do like it, it just never ends. The, the amount of resources that are available was really cool. Yeah. And right. what, like, what was true for us, too, is, you know, there's a difference between kind of believing something and having intellectual knowledge about it. Like you said, just kind of reading it from a book and then having actual experience and knowledge, like having that experience. Um, what it, it's just looking at people who actually did it and who you know who at your brokerage is going to be that person who's already done it has a proven plan and is willing to stand behind you every day to carry out that plan and hold you accountable to it right and For sure that's i mean there's at least 12 people right around us who are <laughs> exactly that so um awesome man and, I, it was just to part. add to that just to mm -hmm. add to that, you know, I'm, I, I listen to Tony Robbins and one of the things he always says is, you know, proximity is power. And I really feel by joining this group, I, I'm really getting that. Right. And I don't have to pay for it. You know, that's so, you know, I know Michael Reese and they spent millions of dollars in investing in themselves into different companies. So they already figured it out. Right. They're saving me the million dollars because I, I listen, I go to different conferences. I invest in myself. Um, you know, I'm in coaching. So I, I do it because I get it and I, and I see the value in that. But these are guys who have already done it, figured it out, and, and, and they're sharing what, what they know. So it's I think I see a lot of value in that. Awesome. Yeah, it was, it was very similar for us. Um, <clears throat> so tell me about, um, you know, some 40 transactions last year. What are your goals for this year? And how do you feel? this partnership with the XP is going to be key in helping you get there. And, and, you know, if you want to touch on also what we're going through right now with this pandemic and, and, you know, the worry that it's causing people um, and kind of what your plans are to leverage the group to get through this and come out stronger and, and grow. For sure. So yeah, you said a couple of things there. I mean, First, my goal this year, uh, I'm looking to do 20 million in volume. Last year, it was just me and the TC. I'm looking to add in a full-time assistant, maybe two if I have to, if it's necessary. Um, and my sister just got licensed. So I'm, look, I'm looking to uh, leverage her on the buying side because she's great. She's excellent with, with my clients. You know, she, she really cares and she truly really listens. So I know she's going to do great. So I'm training her, teaching her as much as I can from everything I know. Um, as far as what I see in the group, I mean, you guys already, like I said, you guys are already done. Uh, you guys are already past my this level where I'm where I'm heading to, right? So, um, I'm sure you guys are gonna um, put me in the right direction. On, you know what not to do, what what to do, so I can um, elevate the business and really get to that 12 million mark in in a, in, in faster time, right? Um, as far as the coronavirus and what's happening and 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 you know how I think this group can help me, well. First of all, I've never been in, this is going to be my first crash technically, right? I've never been in a down market. You know, I joined in 2015 and the market from 2015 till now has been a bull market, right? It's been rising. So I've never experienced a down market. So um, learning from people like yourselves 
and these guys who've already been there, um, I, I'm, I've already learned a lot about what to do in the down market, right? Um, so just off of that, I, I, I think, um, you know, it, my business is actually going to grow during this time, and it, and it has, you know, and I'm, I'm actually pretty excited. It's unfortunate what's happening, but there is people who need, who are going to need us, who need us right now, right? Yeah. As the professionals to come in and actually help them buy and sell, right? So right now I'm focusing on my skills um, and, and reaching out to as many people, let them know, hey, I'm a professional and we're here to help. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things too with with this market and, and going through the pandemic, where it it not everybody has the answer, but we're constantly experimenting with what what is working the best right now. We're constantly questioning our database. We're talking to them, reaching out, and kind of feeling how they feel around this whole thing. And and what I felt in like the last two weeks or, or the last ten days or so is it's really like okay, it's go time now. Like now it's now it's 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 I don't want to say it's business as usual, but it. It is for us, at least, you know, it, it really is a different way of doing business. You have to be, you know, a, a little sensitive and have empathy in regards to you know the people you are reaching out to because you don't know what they're going through. And this is obviously hitting very close to home. But that said, there's so many transactions that are happening. There's so many sellers reaching out saying, hey, raising my hand, I'm, I'm ready to go on the market right now. Let, let's roll. What do we need to do? Um, so people understand that we're in the new now and, and we're moving forward through this Um just, you know, wearing gloves, wearing masks, doing, doing the right thing, being safe about things. And, and nobody's batting an eye at, you know, I don't want to wear a mask a month ago. I was too cool for that. <laughs> you know, yeah. but now everybody, if you don't have a mask on, you're, you're, you're the, you're the weirdo. So you're the problem. So, you know, it, it it's again, and we're just operating in the new now, a lot of buyers are showing up right now. A lot of sellers are showing up and they're, they're super motivated. They're looking to do a deal. Yeah, for sure. And also, I mean, if you listen to some of the um, some of the other podcasts and some of the Facebook lives that are coming out with Brent Gove, and Gene Frederick, and everybody, and the, the, we're built for this uh, being the theme. You know, where uh, we're a virtual brokerage, and so in this situation right now, every agent in the world is essentially a virtual agent, um, and a lot of them are at brokerages that are kind of scrambling, trying to figure out how to do this, and we're we already are that. So we're just focusing on how can we give back more? How can we bring more value to our clients? How do we find those people that actually do have to buy and sell right now? Because you're right. You know, there's there are a lot of people who are just not going to do anything right now. But there are a lot of people who have to move, who have to buy, who have to sell for a number of reasons. Maybe they need to downsize. They may just have a job transfer, right? Uh, you know, probate divorce could be anything. And if we're not doing our job and being able to get in front of them and let them know that we're here and we're ready to help them, I think it's a disservice, you know, because who knows yep. who the answer are going to end up with, in, right? So, um, yeah, I think it's really important to make sure that we're still working. There's so yeah. many people who are not. We just don't know what to do, right? Right. Or at least adjust your approach, right? Um, me personally, I I've been focusing – some time on actually online online lead generation, right? Because everyone's home, all the eyeballs are on their phones right now. So you know, I, I've been spending time on um, you know different type of ads and to be able to uh, lead gen and, and offer something, right, of value. So um, you know, if, if it's not on the phones all day, maybe phones for a couple hours and then adjust to something else, right? Mm -hmm. Something different. So I think yeah. it's about adjusting, right? Yeah. yeah, I was going to say the other like, you know, like like being grateful or optimistic about what's happening too. the the, the nice thing about it is we were running into more and more issues with voice over IPs and dialers getting cell phones because they were just coming up as spam, you know, and all we wanted for, forever was was cell phones and nobody was answering their home lines. But right. now <laughs> our answer rates like through the roof when we're calling, you know, when we're circle prospecting and stuff because everybody is picking up those home lines now. So, you know, it's it's uh, again, it's 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 a different way of it's kind of the same way of doing business. It's just little tweaks. Transactionally, we're still very similar to what we're seeing. I, I, uh, you know, uh, I think was Dave, that was you earlier was talking about like for agents, go look at the number of properties that went pending in the last 30 days, like know what's happening in your market. And I think that you'll be surprised, you know, in, in, in what's actually happening when you don't have the news on all day, scaring the crap out of yourself. Totally. And what, you know, what is true for me as well is, and, and a lot of my coaching clients and the agents on my team, um, for a while there, everybody was just scared to call 
because they didn't want to seem insensitive. And, you know, like we said before, the truth is there are people that need our help. So it's just a minor adjustment. We're already, you know, people like us, we're already doing business in a certain way. You make a minor adjustment and you just go, right? So instead of just calling and going right into why did your home expire, uh, maybe we're giving them some something of value about what's happening in their neighborhood, about what's happening with regard to the market and COVID. Um, eventually, if they're interested and they're motivated to do something, they're going to ask you. You don't even have to ask, are you planning to buy or sell? Eventually, if you're bringing them enough value, they're going to ask you, so what's going on with the market? Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's just a slight adjustment. Uh, there's a lot of there are a lot of people who I've spoken to who just did not make any adjustments and are just going straight at what they've always done. Um, and, and what's true for us is we just made a small adjustment, came from value, came in a little bit softer. And the conversation, if it if they're motivated, if they need help, is going to go to real estate, right? Yeah. And that's kind of the same way we're, we're going about it too. But like you're talking about too, Dave, it, w- that, that was interesting for us is, you know, March 15th, March 16th, March, like right in the heart of when things were changing or, 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 you know, the news was really exploding and whatnot. We have two uh, virtual assistants that dial all day long for us. We didn't change their script one bit. They literally did everything. And it was just boom, boom, boom. Like it was Mike Ferry style prospecting, no questions, no, no, sensitive side, anything like that. And they just, and I'm telling you, it was like the contacts were just coming through um, with, with, you know, similar responses as we've always seen, you know, it's like, yeah, no, my, my, you know, that was my parents' home and and they moved to Florida recently. So they want to sell it and blah, blah, you know, it's like we tweaked kind of the, the, the homes we were calling, we're calling vacant homes, you know, that sort of thing. Um, But the script for them just basically stayed completely the same. And I thought that was interesting because we, you know, that, that, trunk monkey, that gremlin that we have in our brain, we create so much around it. And and it was nice to have that monitored where really nothing changed for them in the way they were doing things. Yeah. Yeah, totally. We're seeing the same thing. Um, so, all right. So what you said before was the, the collaboration and just being around people who've done what you want to do, right? And what are some of the other things that attracted you to the company? Um, I know that was the big one, but what were some of the other things in terms of, you know, anything, systems, tools, from a year of talking to, to, to us, uh, what were some of the, the key things that brought you over? I mean, aside, aside from the amount of value that I see, um, I mean, the rev share is, is something that also attracted me because I was earning profit share at Keller Williams and, um, you know, I, I really, I, I understood the model and I, I thought it was brilliant, a brilliant model. Right. But when I started comparing it to rev share, you know, the, the opportunity is just, it's just amazing. Right. Um, and I think a lot of people, um, don't, under, don't really understand it. Right. And they just kind of see it and they're just like, Oh, whatever, you know, same thing with profit share. Like most people don't understand profit share and, and don't get involved in profit share. Right. Um, but I was one of those people that, and I didn't invest that much time in profit share. I literally, I just focused on growing my business and a lot of people came to me, right? And, and that's kind of the same approach I'm doing here. My, my goal is to grow my business to the next level and show value, right? But the, the rev share, um, once I really understood how it works, I was like, man, this is this is crazy, you know? <laughs> this is like, um, so I, 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 I see how I can help more people and how it can benefit them and, and me at the same time. So, yeah, and that's really important too, because there is a lot of misinformation out there around revenue share and around the stocks. And the truth about it for us is it's all about production. It's all about selling more homes and helping people um, work with more buyers and sellers. And if you bring enough value into their world regarding that, the revenue share is going to show up. And a, and a lot of people are just going out and just, you know, shouting rev share. And uh, because of that, there's there's a lot of misinformation, a lot of misinformation. In fact, it's surprising sure. to me the amount of brokers and, and leadership in, in other brokerages that don't really understand this model um, from what I've heard from, from other agents and what they tell us about it. Um, it is all about value and culture and, and helping people sell more homes and helping them in a better, more efficient way. Um, but the money is also 
awesome and significant, right? <laughs> yeah, it's not it's too shabby. Type of alignment. I mean, I, I just want to say though, like you know, because you know, a lot of people say, "Oh, they're just recruiting people." I'm like, "Well, if we recruit a thousand people and they don't produce, we don't make any money." You know what right. I'm saying? So they need to be in product. They need to be producing in order to benefit. So you know, what the amount of value that's given from the group, there's no reason why each agent should not cap one and two grow their business, right? So with with that, you know, I can use that to help agents grow their my business and help them grow their business, right? So you know, it's all going to be value. It's not going to be, hey, you should come because we're, you know, because of ref sharing the yeah. stocks. Like those are all pluses, you know. It, it's about the value. Yeah, they're always like, they're like, oh, you're, you're, you know, people are recruiting from EX people. I was like, no, we're trying to show you that there's a better way to do business out there. And coincidentally, we're we're probably one of the least expensive brokerages you can actually hang your license at. But I tell everybody, I'm like, I don't, I don't care if I have to pay a million dollars a year to learn how to make two million or three million. Like it doesn't matter. You can take 75% of my income if my tax return goes up at the end of it. You know, isn't that the goal? Making making more money and doing it in an easier way. Um, so it's so funny how many people like, yes, coincidentally, we're we're one of the least expensive brokerages you can hang your license at. Um, but it's so crazy how many people focus on that or how many people are are there like I care what uh, you know, as one of our buddies uh, back in the day, Patrick, he, he used to always say, he's like, I care what my tax return says. That's what matters. That's what, that's the number that actually matters. Um, yeah. What you're getting taxed on from the government. So, um, but yeah, no, that, that, that's, that's something that's so true. You know, it's just people are throwing that like recruiting thing out and it's like, no, we're, we actually we want to show you how to go about doing your business better, how to grow you to that next level. And, you know, what is your current brokerage doing for you to make sure that you hit your 2020 goals? That's the thing right there too. It's like choosing your group is so important. And uh, and Brett, you and I spent a lot of time, and and Jeff Bonk and Joe Oz, and we all we all spent a lot of time making sure that we were aligned with the right group, uh, the the right brokerage, which we knew was EXP and the right group. Because uh, essentially, you know, when you're joining our group, you're basically hiring us as your coach for free. And for us, it was like. We're hiring Dan Beer and Kyle Whistle and Jay Kinder as our coach for free because of the way that this collaboration works, um, which has been amazing. You know, you get all this content. And like you said before, it's not just high level content that you could get on YouTube or that you could anybody could read from a book. It's experiential content of like, here, we tried this or we perfected this over the course of the last five years. And here's exactly what we saw work. And here, take it. You know, what's ours is yours. That's how our group functions, which is why this has been so much fun and, and why it's it's attracting such awesome uh, growth minded and learning based agents like you. Yeah. And, and, and to that point, too, I mean, even just from the admins side of things, like even if you're looking to grow a team and you don't know how to do your first hire, how to train your first hire, how to do like all of that stuff that that is so common for agents as they're growing to 20, 25 million or, or 40, 50, whatever the number may be. Whereas like Dave and I are saying, no, here are, here's our admins, have your admin reach out to them and, and, you know, hop on a zoom with them or meet with them in the office when we can do that again. But like, they'll literally walk you through what we're doing on our back end to make sure that, you know, as you're growing a team, your staff is doing, you know, everything as perfect as possible. Yeah. And just to add to that, uh, Brett, you know, first week I, I got into the, you know, I joined, you know, you, you sent me up with your assistant, we had uh, about, I think, 40 minute call and she was just explaining how you guys run uh, all your transaction management. Right. And, you know, I had my assistant with me and she we recorded the thing. So I see a lot of value in that because you're saving me so much time. Right. Because why would I'm why am I going to go try to figure it out when you, you have a team, you know, that's doing it already, understands how to use it m the most efficient way. And, you know, you just say, hey, just reach out to her. Let her know, you know, you're, you're with us. And right away, she, she, we hopped on a call, I think the next day, and she gave us everything. So for, I really appreciate that one. Yeah. And I wasn't, you know, I wasn't doing that for that. people like Kelly you know? Williams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but, but that, that, even that from the staffing level, from, from who you're coaching with, you know, out to is, is Tom Ferry the best one? Is, is our coach Kelly, is she the best? Like there's, there's always, there's so much that, that we've been through that we can, say, Hey, you know what? Maybe go down the Matthew Ferry road right now. Like get spiritual, get on the mindset side of things or 
go heavy mic fairy. You got to just hammer through this right now. Like it, it, we, we've been through a lot, you know, and, and because of that, we can really give um, good advice. I mean, you know, in regards to what best practices are or what will fit best for you, depending on what your goals are and where you want to go with it, that sort of thing. Cause it always changes. It's like, then, then you might run into a different issue and, 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 you know, and then it's like, all right, we'll go, <laughs> go do a, do a, do a little Tony Robbins from seven thirty to eight or something to break that down. And then, you know, and, and just kind of develop it from there. Gotcha. Yeah. There, there is a lot of different verse, you know, there's a lot of versatility here in this group. So, um, I'm really looking forward to sitting here in like six months and you just completely crushing it. Um, if people wanted to have a, a discussion with you around, you know, maybe some questions that they have around, I mean, you spent a year uh, making sure this is the right move, right? And I'm sure there are a lot of people out there. I mean, you're, you're very uh, highly respected in, in our market. Um, people have questions or just wanted to chat with you. Uh, can they reach out to you or w what's the best way for of course to get in touch? i mean you can reach you can reach out you could just call me my number is 201-759-3235 that's my cell you can text me you can call me um you can go on my instagram which is above right there in the back screen and it's also on my name here it's, it's my first name dot my last name um you can reach out to me on facebook send me a, a, a message a messenger message or you can you know or you can go to um explain the right way .com. that kind of goes over a, a brief overview of the company and I, I suggest you check that out first you know uh and then any questions off of that you know reach out to me we can go over everything but that really breaks down uh everything about the company uh as, mu as much as possible and anything you probably are going to ask me about anyways but if you just have a simple question of course i'm, I'm here um any questions to be answered you reach out via cell phone instagram or, or facebook awesome Thanks, man. Awesome. So uh, before we wrap up, is there anything, Brett, that you wanted to ask or touch on or, or Stephen, anything we didn't cover that you wanted to uh, share? Well, yeah, I actually, I have a question for you guys. So, you know, you guys are considered uh, whales, right? Like Jake Kinder says, or, or mega team, a mega team, right? Or bigger agents, right? Who are doing things at a high level. So how does maybe someone's like, oh, you know, that company's for like mediocre agents or like, you know, uh, not, not really big agents, right? I mean, what value can you can, did you guys see right like what what did you guys see and wh what what made you make the decision like what like the same question you guys asked me like what made you come over and and how does how do you bring value to a big a big team or a big agent like that that's a good question um i mean we did these interviews a year ago so if you go watch those, we talk about it then. But after being here for you know 14 months, what we expected and the reasons why we did decide to bring our business here at was 100% what happens. Um, and it was very similar to what you saw. It was like, you know, and, and we, Brett, I, I think we are similar in, in this thought. And I mean this in the most humble way possible. We were trying to find value. And before, when we were with Keller Williams, we I loved KW too. I mean, you know, I owned markets. I was an investor in two different market centers. I flew all over the country to try to find as much value as I could and learn. And I did learn a ton. Um, and it was at, at that point where it was like, all right, where are the people that I could be next to, that I could collaborate with, who are doing big things, who have done bigger things than me? that I could hang out with and we could learn from and we could work with and partner with. And it was kind of that true partnership and true collaboration that really Brett and I both at the same time, we were in Phoenix, right? And we were at a yep. dinner table and we looked around the room and there was like, I don't know, uh, <laughs> billions of dollars worth of production. And we were just sitting at this table like, holy shit. Um, and, and that was like, at that moment we were like, all right, this is what, this is, who I want to be involved with. Um, it, that was one of the main reasons. Yeah, not it's not often that Dave and I are the two dumbest people sitting at a table when we're talking about real estate. And we <laughs> realized very quickly that we were around some of the most powerful people. So I would say like, if you're, yeah, if you're, if you're a mega team, um, Dave and I also, you know, we, we did in 2018, we did about 200 million in transactions. We could have opened our own shop. You know, we could have went that route too. Um, but I, I just, I don't understand that move. There's so much, reinventing of a, of a wheel that already exists that 
you know, somebody's going to open their own brokerage or somebody's going to have, you know, a large team, for instance, in, in regards to, you know, being able to either keep more of their mo own money if they're doing their own brokerage or they want to make money off of other agents. And um, Dave and I are able to just completely set our ego aside and say, no, this is the right. I don't need to have my name on. I don't need to be Glenn Sanford. You know, this is this is a vehicle that allows us to collaborate, add value to agents, allows us to make money off of agents, allows us to keep more of our own money and, and, and grow and hit our goals. So there's, there's no reason not to hang EXP right next to, you know, the Batten Kurth group or the Debo group, the Sakura group, that sort of thing. Um, and I think that's what, what it really comes into is people are like, no, I can do, I can do this better. I can do that. You know, and, and it really is a, such a well thought out model when you take the time to digest it. Um, like Dave and I finally did you know, and, about 18 months ago. And like, like you said, the, you know, the agents that were are on our teams are making a lot more money, you know, just flat out the cap. Right. And yeah. they have way more tools and training. And, and when, when agents are making more money, they're happier, they're in a more abundant mode and they end up doing more business just from that. Um, and I, and I know our, our agents are in a better place. They have just, they just have more at their fingertips. Um, yeah, we, yeah <laughs> like Steve, we, we literally for, for my team privately tomorrow at our team meeting, Jay Kinder and thanks to Tara for, for making it happen. Um, but Jay Kinder's coming on and doing his whole listing presentation for my team. Like that's like, that doesn't happen anywhere else. It's like, it, it's unheard of, you know? Um, so Jay, if you're listening. And for those, and for those who don't know Jay Kinder is who, who's Jay Kinder. So Jay Kinder co-wrote the Miracle Morning for Real Estate Agents um, with Michael Reese. They own Kinder Reese Coaching. Um, they're just they're 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 some of the the most powerful you know minds in this business. I think Jay, what was he twenty seven? He was selling over five hundred homes a year at Oklahoma. Um, and number two, number two in the in the country or in the world at Caldwell Banker. So like it, it's kind of a big deal, you know. He's he's really played around with a lot of things. Actually, at that dinner table. When Dave and I realized we were the dumbest ones there, what were they doing? They were saying, hey, if you get an email list, just a blank email list of 30,000 emails that you know work, what yeah. do you do with them? Yeah. And then to watch all their brains start firing in a completely different way. And they all have different, like, and everything that came out of their mouth, Dave and I were just like, why? <laughs> I was like, yeah, <laughs> could I have more sake, please? <laughs> So that yeah, that that's that's a good you know, that's what it's all about, man. Totally, yeah. All right, man. So again, um, if anybody has any questions or just wants to chat with you, uh, just hit him up everywhere: um, Facebook, Instagram, email. Uh, and um, yeah, this has been great, man. Totally, yeah. awesome. we're we're so excited to have you here and and uh, be able to work together and do some big things. So 20 million, 30, bro, 30. Piece of cake. 30. Yeah, it's too, it's too small. They're 30. <laughs> we'll, we'll bump it up to 30. <laughs> That's awesome, well, listen, first, I just want to thank you guys, man. You guys have been super supportive onboarding. Um, you know, we've been on the phone nonstop and, and it's about business too. We, we've been, you've been helping me in regards to mindset about what to do right now. So I really appreciate your time and support and, and I really look forward and I'm very excited to, to the future. So, uh, I know where this is going and, you know, it's just a matter of time. Awesome, man. Awesome, man. Well, thanks again, uh, Brett. Thanks. Uh, I'll talk to you in a little bit and um, peace, everybody. Thanks, guys. Peace. Take care.